Hello everyone, my name is Trooper, and welcome back to another video. Today I am showing you guys how to install LSPDFR, the latest version, onto your guys' GTA 5. It's been about four months, three months on how to do this, and since then GTA 5 has yet again updated. What a surprise, and there is a few little changes to LSPDFR that make a big difference on whether it actually works or not. And tons of you guys have been saying there's issues that I can't really help with in the comment section just because it's too complicated to explain. So I thought I'd hop back in here with another updated LSPDFR tutorial guide and show you guys how to install LSPDFR from the ground up. So the first thing you guys want to do is find your GTA 5 main directory inside of your file directory. To do that, what you guys want to do is open up your file explorer. Now, for those of you guys on Steam, I'm going to show you guys how to get to your GTA 5 right now. But for those of you guys on Epic Games and Rockstar Games, your GTA 5 main directory and how to get to it will be down in the description below. But as I said, for those of you on Steam, what you guys are going to want to do is go to whatever drive your Steam is installed on. Program Files 86, then go to Steam, Steam Apps, and then Common. And here will be your GTA 5 folder along with your other games. But for me, and maybe for you, is under a custom directory, which is the exact same thing, but under a custom drive and also minusing the Program Files 86, so it's the exact same file directory. Once you guys have found your GTA 5 main directory, if you go inside of it, it should look a little bit like this, which is pretty empty compared to what it will be like at the end of this video. The first thing you guys are going to do is go back, grab this GTA 5 folder, and then Control C on that. Control C the folder, and then Control V again. You guys should be able to see it makes a Grand Theft Auto 5 copy, and it will literally copy and paste the whole game. That is because it is essential to always have a second copy of the game. Just in case your mods ever go wrong, you do not have to reinstall GTA 5 from Steam ever again. So you always have a game folder to fall back on that you can delete your modded folder if it goes completely wrong and then copy again. Because it is much, much faster to copy and paste a game than it is to download it. Because rather than downloading it from the internet and from Steam servers, which are really, really slow no matter how fast your internet is, you'll be downloading it and copy and pasting it from your drive. So it really just depends on your drive speed. So as you guys can see here, to do 100 gigabytes, it's only going to take 17 minutes, but it might take longer or shorter for you. Most of you guys, it's probably going to take shorter if you have it on an SSD. But if you don't and you have it on a hard drive like me, just for the extra storage and stuff like that, then it will take about 17 minutes. But what I'll do is I'll cut back to once that is done. Once your GTA 5 has finished copying over, what you guys are going to want to do is open up the downloaded file and you should be able to see that every other file that was in the previous version we copy and pasted is also here as well. The next step is going to be grabbing your clean version of GTA 5 and renaming this to clean, grabbing your copy version, deleting copy, and then making sure it says Grand Theft Auto V, making sure that whatever version you are trying to run, whether it be your clean version with no mods or your modded version is always named Grand Theft Auto V, that is because that is what Steam looks for when it is starting the game. Otherwise, it literally will not find GTA 5 and it will try to reinstall it thinking you don't have it installed. Once you guys have done that, you're going to want to go inside of your directory, right click and then new and folder and then call this folder mods. This is also essential, so make sure you guys do this. A lot of people skip this step or don't realize you have to do this. This is because you do not want to be installing your mods exactly into your gta 5 game directory because you always want to have files that you can replace your previous files that you modded with just in case stuff goes wrong so once you've done that grab your x64 and your update folder Control c go into your mods folder and then yet again Control v and then just like that you'll be copy and pasting a couple more files into your gta 5 this will take a lot lot shorter than the previous one as you guys can see here 7 minutes and 30 seconds, so about 10 minutes less, and it could be even quicker if you guys are on an SSD. So yet again, I'll cut back to once this is done. So once your files in your mods folder have finished copying over, what you guys want to do is hit the first link down in the description below, and that will bring you guys right here to the LSPD first response build 8334, or whatever version you are currently installing at the time of watching this video. What you guys are going to want to do is hit download this file, Agree and download and make sure you guys install the manual install.zip. Hit download and then wait for that to install. Once it's done downloading, what you guys are going to want to do is open the download file on up and you'll be greeted with a bunch of files and folders. Now to install this, pretty simply, all you guys want to do 
is grab your GTA 5 main directory, your modded one, and your download file. Control A in your download file. And then deselect licenses. And then drag and drop it into your game. Making sure you do not drag and drop it into your folder. So make sure you have plenty of room on the side here to drag and drop it into. Drag and drop like this. And directly into your GTA 5 folder. And it will start copying all of the files for LSVFR that you need over into your GTA 5. And once that's done, what you guys are going to want to do is then hit the next download link down in the description below. You can close your LSVFR download now. And that will bring you guys right here to script hook V. This is what you need in order to be able to basically hook the scripts. You do not need this to actually play LSVDFR on its own. When it comes to modding it with plugins and cars and proper sirens and stuff like that, this is a essential. Make sure you guys do not skip this step. What you guys are going to want to do is hit download. Wait for that to be done. It should be done pretty quickly. Go inside of the bin folder and you'll be greeted with these three files. We're only going to need to install these two right here because we're going to be installing a different trainer in a bit. What you guys are going to want to do from here is simply grab both these files and drag and drop them into your file directory yet again, making sure they do not go into any folders by accident. And there you guys go. That is script hook V also successfully installed. And now for the last thing we guys are going to install, is hitting the next download link down in the description below. And that will bring you guys right here to simple trainer. This is what you use to spawn in all your cars, spawn in your guns, teleport. If you can kill people, it's pretty much your basic menu from GTA 5 Online, but pretty much on steroids. You can do tons of other stuff, including adding money. This only works to story mode, though, so don't try using this on your GTA 5 Online account since it will gate yourself. And it is not allowed, but on story mode, as you guys know, it is allowed to mod. What you guys want to do is hit download, download again, open up the download file. And pretty much the exact same thing. We're going to grab both of these files here and drag and drop them into your game. Now, when it comes to installing these sort of files, you should be able to see that they have a configuration settings file. And it is pretty self-explanatory. The configuration settings is where you can configure the settings, the key bindings that they come with. If you right click on that and open it with anything that reads words. So it could be Notepad++ or just Notepad in general, whatever you guys want to use. You guys should be able to see here that you can see all of your menu keys and they are used with numbers but it does explain what the numbers are here and if you guys do not know what the numbers are and you do want to change them you can always google that and it should come up first thing if you google script hook v key binding numbers it should come up so you can change the key bindings here you can change pretty much every single key binding and hotkeys to do different things such as spawning in players and stuff like that i wouldn't recommend really messing around with it too much yet since you guys don't know what you're doing but if you do then go ahead and change your key bindings and also the next step to make sure that our lspfr runs smoothly is going inside of your lspfr folder and go inside of the lspfr configuration settings right click on that and open it with notepad plus plus or notepad and what you guys are going to want to do is grab this true and delete it and rename it to false That'll basically stop any texture loss from happening as soon as you load into your game. Since LSPDFR isn't actually meant to be in GTA 5, it isn't exactly smooth no matter how many years it's been out for. There's always going to be issues because GTA 5, although they say they allow it, they kind of combat against it every single update. So disable that, make it false, and that will stop quite a lot of your texture loss issues. And I'd also recommend changing this from true to false, but it is really annoying when you guys are in a pursuit and a cop commandeers a vehicle. It just isn't realistic and it kind of just takes you out of the role play so i'd recommend getting rid of that as well once you guys have done that hit save and then you can close out of here now our next step is actually starting it on up to do that go back to your gta 5 folder directory itself head down and then find rage plugin hook.exe and instead of launching it through steam every single time you want to play lsvfr you could create a shortcut if you want for this file or you could always just come into your gta 5 main directory you're going to want to start it up through here because that will grab all your plugins like LSPFR, etc., and load them into your game. If you don't do that, then LSPFR will not work. So double click on that and wait for it to launch. You'll be able to see here, it will give you a little disclaimer. You can read it if you want. I'd recommend reading it to make sure you guys know what you're getting into. Hit accept. And then wait for it to be done with its first time initialization. And it should pop up 
with a little rage plugin hook settings and if it does ask you guys to back up your gta 5 main directory then i would recommend doing that as well and the next step is grabbing this 10,000 and changing it to 60,000 which gives us more time for our plugins to load without it instantly cancelling out gta 5 yet again making it more stable and stopping the game from crashing and if you go into plugins go to load these plugins and startup select lspd first response go to load all plugins and startup and then hit save and launch so what i'll do is i'll cut back to once we are in the game but once you guys are in game you guys should spawn in as you would normally in the story mode do not worry that does not mean your lspfr is not working from here what you guys are going to want to do is open up the menu and you should be able to see you have a brand new lspdfr tab head over to that then click character and then go to nearest police station depending on where you are it will take you to the nearest police station either in the city or in the sandy shores and then from here what you guys are going to want to do is go up to wherever the symbol is it's normally going to be on a door and then right on d-pad or i believe it is e on keyboard to enter inside of the police station and then once you guys have loaded inside of the police station you guys should be able to click go on duty and it will pop up with an option telling you that you need to create a lspdfr character because you cannot use your story mode character hit ok and it will basically load a online character creation menu where you can create your online character how you would normally so make that how you want if you guys are going to install eup in the future which is kind of like all your more advanced uniforms then it doesn't really matter how your character looks because you can change it and properly customize it through the eup menu as well i normally just randomize back and forth until i get someone that looks all right that guy will do hit save and continue you can enter a name or keep the name you already have i'm going to name my guy highway trooper hit enter and click use and just like that you guys should spawn in to the police station giving you the option to go inside to the police locker change your uniform i believe quite a lot of uniforms in here aren't actually available but you should be able to see quite a few of them are but do not worry in a later video to come i will show you guys how to install eup which gives you guys way 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 more uniforms and probably the uniforms we're used to seeing on youtube and 5m and stuff like that but choose the suit you want hit confirm go to your police garage And you should be greeted with pretty much every single police vehicle in the game. Normally, pick the one you want again. I'll go for this one and then click select and continue. And it should spawn you outside inside of the police car. All the sirens should work as they usually would if you guys are in story mode or online when you steal the car. And from here, you guys can open up the menu by holding the two square button on controller. And this will be pretty much your police radio where you can request a call out. You can choose if they're available for calls. You can do an emote in action whenever you use the radio. You can also close nearby roads, request record checks on people that you pull over, etc. And that is pretty much it to learning the basics of how to install LSVFR. Hope you guys did find this video useful. If you did, please with a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my most recent video, which at the time of recording this is a LSVFR let's play or episode whatever you guys want to call it so be sure to check that out and other than that i'll see you guys in the next video cheers and goodbye